Hey what's up everyone, in this video I will show you how you can set up the workflow of your ASP.NET web application in which you can use SAS for CSS stylesheet generation and TypeScript to write your JavaScript code. I will be using the Gulp task runner to generate the CSS and JavaScript files from .scss and .css files which will act as the source. So SAS helps us in writing less code for CSS. It provides many features which enable us to quickly set up our CSS styling rules and then eventually compile the SAS code into equivalent CSS styles. TypeScript is an extension of JavaScript and it helps in writing JavaScript code which is safe, bug-free and it compiles to several different versions of JavaScript with a ton of compilation options. Lastly, Gulp is a task runner which is widely used to execute tasks which involves building and deploying application code. So this video is about setting up the environment of an ASP.NET project. So I will not go into much details explaining how to use SAS, TypeScript and Gulp and how to write code for them. There are already tons of tutorials available out there for these libraries and packages. Also, I will keep this video's scope limited to using all of these technologies together in an ASP.NET Core or Framework web application inside the Visual Studio development environment. So without wasting any more time, let's get started with the code example. Before we begin, I would like to thank all of you for taking your time and watching this video. It is always a pleasure to create these kinds of tutorial videos and if at any point while watching it, you feel that you like this video or you think that it is helpful for you, then please like this video and also subscribe to this channel. This will make sure that you will always be the first one to get to know about new video updates. Alright, so this is Visual Studio 2017 and the first thing that I will do is to create a new project which is going to be the ASP.NET Core web application and I am just going to name it let's say test web application click on ok and we need to create an empty application and then click on ok first i will set up the folder structure which we will need to have the scss and the typescript files and then we will also need the folders to have the output css file and the output javascript file first let's create the folder for having the scss files and let's just call it sas and now we can create another folder and this is going to have the TypeScript files so I'm just going to call it TS. Now inside this www root folder I'm going to add two new folders. The first one is going to be CSS for the generated CSS files and the second folder is going to be called as JS for the generated JavaScript files. It all depends on your project requirements, the folder structure that you want to set up for your application. I just want to keep things simple so that everyone can understand how we can generate the CSS and JavaScript files from SAS and TypeScript source files using the Gulp task runner. So our folders have been created. Now it's time to first create a package.json file which we will use to download the node modules for the Gulp typescript and sas so let's just add a new item and i'm just going to add a new json file let's just name it package.json and when this file is added we need to provide the information of the dependencies which we need to download and for that i'm just going to first add an object dependencies the first one that we need to download is typescript so let's just write typescript over here and then the version is going to be the latest one. The next dependency is going to be for Gulp. And the next one is going to be for Gulp SAS. And the final one is going to be for Gulp TypeScript. Now to download these dependencies, we need to go to the solution explorer and then right click on the package.json file and then click on restore packages. This will install the packages and after this we need to add a new file in the project for writing the code for the gulp task runner and this is going to be a javascript file so i'm just going to name it as gulp file.js in the gulp file.js first we need to fetch the references of the gulp and gulp sas and gulp typescript modules so for that let's just first write the code to fetch the references the first one is for gulp and this can be done by calling require and then providing the name 
which is gulp similarly we can fetch the reference for gulp sas and gulp typescript next i'm going to create an object and this is going to be called as file paths so this is going to be an object which will have properties for the input and output paths for the scss and the typescript files so let's just first add the sas input path and this is going to be the path of the folder which is this one sas now what i'm going to do is to write the path in such a way that all the files in all the folders are going to be picked by this path so that we don't have to write the file names individually or we don't have to provide the folder names which are inside this sas folder for that first we need to start from the root and then we need to provide the folder name and then two asterisks and then again an asterisk and then the extension of the sas files which is scss so this is the sas input path and now for the output path i'm just going to make a copy over here of this property and let's just rename it as sas output path now the output path is inside this www root folder inside this css folder so what we can do is we need to rename this path and then we need to provide the name of the css folder which is this one and we are done with sas input and output folders and now it's time for typescript folder paths so for typescript i'm just going to rename the folder name over here for the input with ts and for extension 2 and for output i'm just going to write the folder name for js so we have our file paths and next we need to create the tasks for compiling sas and typescript files into their equivalent css and javascript files so first i will create a new gulp task for sas files and let's just first provide the name and this is going to be build sas and then we need to provide a function which is going to be executed for this task and this is going to be an arrow function the first thing that i will do is to return a gulp dot src or to fetch the source files and the source files can be fetched from this property which is sas input path next we need to pipe a new execution of the gulp sas module function so let's just do that dot pipe and then gulp sas next we need to write another pipe statement to provide the folder path for the destination and this can be done by writing another pipe statement and then inside it we need to call gulp.destination or gulp.dest and then inside it i am going to provide the name of the property sas output path so file paths.sas output path and now this is pretty much it for the sas task and i'm just going to copy it and then paste it to create the task for typescript let's just rename it as build ts and we need to provide the correct path for the input and output folder and then inside this pipe we need to call gulp underscore ts now this gulp underscore ts function accept an object as an argument in which we can provide the compiler option now i'm just going to provide a couple of sample compiler options like for example we can check if there is any field with the type equivalent to any or not and the target of the compilation has been set to es6 or ecmascript 6 version of javascript after we have created the tasks for sas and typescript we need to create a default task which is going to execute both of these tasks so it is always better to have default tasks because we are not going to execute each task one after the other the default task also provide us the capability to either execute tasks in series or in parallel so let's just first write exports dot default equals to gulp dot series so in this way we can create and export the default task so gulp dot series the first task is going to be build sas and the second one is going to be build ts after we have created the gulp file.js we need to go to solution explorer and then right click on gulp file.js and then click on task runner explorer sometimes it may happen that the tasks which are contained inside this gulp file.js file are not identified by this task runner explorer if that happens then you need to click on this refresh button on the left and it will again check for any tasks and it will then list them 
Now let's first run this default task to see if everything is running fine or not. So the tasks are running but right now we don't have any source files and because of this we are not going to have any destination CSS and JavaScript files. So let's first add a SAS source file for that I'm going to click on the SAS folder add a new item and this is going to be a style sheet. I'm just going to name it as script.scss and then click on add. Even though I have changed the extension from CSS to SCSS, Visual Studio is being kind of mean to us and not changing it so we have to do this manually. So just change the extension if it isn't automatically added like this and then we need to write some SCSS or SAS code over here. I'm just going to replace this existing stuff with some sample SAS CSS code and when we will run the gulp tasks then this SAS code is going to be compiled into its equivalent CSS form. Now we need to add a new TypeScript file for that I'm just going to add a new item. This is going to be a .ts file and let's just name it as script.ts click on add and again I'm just going to add some sample TypeScript code there are a couple of fields there are two numbers and then there is a string and then we are setting the value and then logging these values to the console pretty standard stuff now let's just go back to the task runner explorer and then right tick on this default task and click on run again this time our source files should be compiled into the css and javascript files so there is the script.css and there is the script.js so it looks like that our workflow is working. There is one other thing that we need to do over here and that is to have this default task run whenever the project is built. So what happens is whenever we will make changes to the SCSS and TypeScript files, then we should not always go to the task runner and then right click and then run this default task manually. It should automatically be run whenever the project is built or whenever any other event happens. So I am just going to bind this task run after the build has been finished. So for that we need to right click on this task and then go to the bindings menu and then we can select when we want this task to run. We can either do that before anything is built or after anything is built. We can select the before build or after build options. So I am just going to select the after build option. We can also select the option for project open which is also going to be a good choice because it could happen that when we have downloaded the code from the source control system then it may be that the CSS and JavaScript files are not already generated. So we can also bind it to project open so that whenever the project is open then these files are automatically recreated as new files. But for this example we are just going to use the after build option. So now let's just delete these existing files and then build this project to see if they are being generated when the project is built. So I'm just going to build the project. So after the project is built, you can see that there are these files again over here generated when the task has been run the third time after the project is built. And this is how you can set up a workflow in your ASP.NET framework or ASP.NET Core web application to have the SAS and TypeScript files and then subsequently compile them into their equivalent CSS and JavaScript file. And this is what this video is all about. And with that, I am going to take my leave. So if you think that you like this video, then feel free to like it and also subscribe to Code First channel to be the first to know about the latest video updates. I am going to see you in the next one. Till then, have a great time.